Hey everybody, Jekyllus Painting here with a new video. And I've got the king of all monsters, Godzilla. It's a really cool 3D model that I found online. Printed him out on my Anycubic Photon. And uh, we're gonna paint him up a little bit today. I'm gonna start off by doing a clean black primer with the airbrush here. With resin models, make sure to do light coats of the primer and kind of let it dry a little bit in between. Helps get a better bond onto that smooth resin. Gonna be painting this guy kind of quick and dirty today. Just fun little project because the new movie came out today. So if you're if you're watching this later, you know it came out on March 31st. I'm recording this on March 31st. A um, lot of fun. Super cool little model. And uh, I'm gonna bring a little bit of color into this paint job. I'm starting off with a black green. Got that very thin and I'm going over the top surfaces of everything. Give them a little bit of that iconic Godzilla green look, even though in the more modern films, he's very like dark charcoaly black brown with a little bit of green showing through. Most of the uh, models that I've seen online have a little bit more green and, and brown colors to them just to give more life to the model, so that's what I'm doing here. I'm gonna grab some of this camo green and do the underside, where the uh, other underside of his little reptile body is gonna be a little lighter colored, and we're gonna work into some browns as well, but just lightly airbrushing that, leaving some of that black showing through in the deepest shadows and recesses, so that all of his craggy scales and textures can pop out a little bit more. But overall, the paint scheme on this guy is gonna be fairly dark, not going to be very poppy because the uh, new design, which I like a lot, is darker colored. I'm going to grab some of this dark golden brown. It's a great color to match with our camo green. And again, I'm going to focus kind of the underside, more like his little chest plate area. And uh, he's got these like layered heavy scales on his, uh, his arms and legs. So I'm also going to pop those just a little bit. It's going to be barely noticeable in the overall paint scheme once everything is fully dry and kind of mutes out, but uh, just adds a little bit of something to him. Once all that paint is dried up, I'm gonna start some dry brushing. And for those of you who don't know what dry brushing is, you take a little bit of wet paint into a soft bristly brush like this guy here and then you wipe away almost all of that paint get all of that moisture and wetness out so you're just using some semi-dry pigments and we very very lightly brush that over the top surfaces of the textures and details on the model which leaves behind some of that paint and kind of pops it out so it creates contrast with our darker colors using these lighter colors and it makes all those those nice scales and textures and things like that pop out on the model so just going over mostly the whole model with this. I'm trying to avoid his big uh, fin scales on the back just because we are gonna do a little bit of effect on there to have him have that iconic blue atomic glow that he has in all the movies and stuff. Speaking of that blue glow, we're going to use the airbrush one more time. I've got this really nice blue from Pro Acryl, and I'm going to be airbrushing that on all of these these big sail fins, scales. I, I don't know what they're exactly called, but the big, the big scale things, right? I'm going to be focusing sort of the base and middle section of these scales because we want to build up kind of a glow effect. And then we're going to be going in with some lighter blues and then also some dry brushing to get that sort of atomic blue to almost a white glow where he's uh, charging up his laser and all that fun stuff. I'm not being uh, super haphazard with this. I am getting a little bit of overspray onto his back and in between those scales with the blue, but that's okay because we've thinned out this paint with some nice flow improver and that creates a more transparent effect. So it has a little bit of that sort of object source lighting glow effect onto the top of his back and things like that. Helps our glow effect look a little bit more real when he's on the table. And then I'm grabbing this turquoise, very, very beautiful bright blue paint, very powerful. And I'm just gonna go over the same areas, but uh, try to be softer with the trigger, 
put less paint onto the model in smaller areas so that way we have the uh, darker black that's covered by a little bit of blue, some of that mid-tone blue, and now this very light blue, and it's going to help our glow effect a lot. And I'm also using a little brush to paint on the underside of some of these details because, um, fun fact, Godzilla actually has gills in these new movies, and I think this is where they're located. It's a little a little tricky because they don't actually talk about it that much in the, in the new film, but um, whenever he charges up his breath weapon, you can kind of see the neck area. There's some light that kind of seeps out of there, so I kind of wanted to capture that because he's, he's like charging up his laser and going to fire that off. And then I'm going to grab some of that same turquoise and dry brush it again over the scale areas. And this is going to pick out a lot of those craggy textures on those scales and get the tips and points and kind of show how the uh, heat is like radiating and these things are kind of starting to get white hot around the edges. And to complete that look, I'm going to grab some ivory, very, very bright off-white paint. I don't like using pure white paint because it's very uh, tricky to use and it doesn't always get the right point across, so ivory is great for this. It's going to read as white to the eye, but without actually using white paint, which can be a little uh, hard to work with. And then I'm just going to very lightly dry brush that over these scales again. That's going to help this glow effect pop. And to finish things off, we're going to use some satin varnish because we want to protect all this nice paint. And I plan on using this guy not only as like a shelf ornament, but also for a stand-in for different types of miniatures games. So probably going to be handling him a whole lot. So I want to make sure to give him a nice varnish to protect all that paint. And the uh, satin varnish is uh, really shiny when it's wet, but when it dries, it tones down to a nice smooth finish, but it does reflect light ever so slightly so it'll help that kind of scaly look for the model. And here he is all done. Like I said, it wasn't going to take very long, didn't do too much to the model, but he definitely looks like Godzilla with his iconic feel and all those glowy bits on his fins and all that fun stuff and he's all dark and craggy and scaly really enjoyable little fun experience that i painted up just for fun hope you guys enjoyed this video i'll catch you next time and uh now i'm gonna leave you with some nice glory shots so you can look over the finished product